friends, I'm here today with Jennifer Cook, singer, director, maker of vocal tracks, and all around fantastic human. If you want to know a little bit more about Jen, check out the about section below this video. Welcome, Jen. Hey, it's great to see you, Kathleen. Huh, I just enjoy our Zoom time together so much. <laughs> Absolutely. So I've known Jen casually for a number of years, but when everything went into Zoom, distance learning, we got to know another quite a bit better. And I've found that we have quite a lot of similar approaches to things, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. Sometimes Kathleen will say something and I feel like she just plucked it right out of my brain. Cause... Right. <laughs> Why are you in my head again? <laughs> exactly. So I thought today we could capitalize on that and I could ask Jen about some of her basic approaches to singing and voice and teaching singing and so on. Can we jump right in with that? Yeah, let's. I'm so excited. This is like my favorite subject ever. So yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, without a big prompt, I'm just going to kind of throw it over to you and see where our conversation takes us. Okay. That sounds perfect. And also a little scary. You know, I've actually, I've studied voice pretty much my entire life. Um, my mom says she has a recording of me singing Delta Dawn when I was four years old or whatever. Aww. Like, Yeah. So, you know, I've always been singing. But I feel like more recently, I've understood more about the actual physiological things that happen when we sing. And that has just really brought me to a place where I feel like I'm singing more naturally. I'm singing more like me. Um, as I, I like to say often that, well, singers and especially barbershoppers, we tend to be overachievers. <laughs> so shocking. Right. And so um, a lot of times I feel like when I'm singing correctly, I'm not working hard enough. And I've been learning how to say, hey, you know what? That's a good thing because now I'm sounding like myself. I'm not micromanaging my voice. Um, right, not trying to sound like somebody. You're not like working exactly. with your instrument rather than contriving something. Yes, exa that's exactly it. And there were so many things that, you know, wonderful coaches uh, gave me or my chorus and I would just say, okay, let's do that without really understanding why I was doing it. And so, especially, you know, with all the time I've had in the past two years, I've really been thinking about, okay, why do we do these things? How do they affect our voice? And are they good for our voice or not great for our voice? Right. Um, and the other, the other thing that comes up for me is, and how do we talk about it? Because as singers and as vocal coaches, we spend so much time trying to figure out how do I translate what I might feel or what I might see to how another person's going to interpret that? Exactly. And especially with like mass vocal production, like I always feel like I want to talk to each person individually to right. see how their voice is doing. Cause... Right. So if you're in a group rehearsal, how do I address all of the things in a exactly. way that's not going to overgeneralize and send some people into weird tension? Oh, like, yes. Ah, I'm, working. <laughs> I'm trying so hard. <laughs> I'm going to do this, darn it. <laughs> awesome, I love it. Yes. So, um, you know, and all, of course, all starts with alignment. And for, you know, I, shout out to my mom who always told me that I needed to have good posture. And then when I um, went to study voice in college, people were like, wow, your alignment's really good. I'm like, yeah, my mom. Um, <laughs> but even until recently, I mean, I knew I was supposed to have good alignment. I knew it helped me sing. But I didn't really think about, okay, why should I have good alignment? And a lot of it is just making sure that my skeleton is doing its job so my muscles don't have to pick up any of the slack and, and you know, exactly. have any tension, right? Absolutely. But I just had never thought about it that way before. I just thought alignment, good. <laughs> alignment, good. So how do you like to, let's say someone doesn't really know how that feels. How do you like to describe that? Uh, so I... I talk a lot about head alignment because I feel like that's where a lot of us fall out of uh, out of alignment, especially on Zoom lately, because even now my camera is a little higher and I can feel like my head. Yes. And and also when I emote, I tend to like to stick my chin like this feels like emoting to me. Right. Yeah. Right. Come and listen to my sad or engaging story with my chin right here and look up my nose. Here it is. Great. <laughs> Sure that'll be a great screen cap right there. We'll, I, I be think a promo picture. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> 
So obviously our whole body needs to be in alignment, but I talk a lot about, and I know it sounds <laughs> simplistic, but the head being above the spinal cord, like really seems to help. Um, I've heard people talk about ears over shoulders and stuff like that which probably works but for some reason again that makes me overachieve i don't know why sure oh you're like so, where, where are my ears yes where are my ears and where, where are my shoulders where are they? <laughs> so if i just think about that that um spinal cord supporting the head and then making sure that the back of my neck is nice and tall i i rarely say tuck the chin because i feel like that creates its own sort of set of um uh tension so just making sure the head's above the spinal cord. And then I also talk a lot about emoting instead of from this plane, from this plane. So emoting uh, more from your eye. Yeah. So the nice. eyes become the main emoter as opposed to my chin. Mm -hmm. And um, I always tell people when it feels right to me, I always I almost feel like my head's floating above my body. Like it feels I love the so word supported. floating. That makes so much sense. And right now, when you just did that, I found myself drawn to seeing your story here. And I quite right. like that. Right. Instead of yes. Oh, good. Yeah. So and and of course, um, I've done a lot of things with the rest of the body alignment. I've I've sung like squatting up against the wall to make sure my pelvis is where it should be. But even then, they're built so differently. Things right. work for we don't all have the same relationship with a wall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, um, but I have used that because I also tend to arch my back when I sing. I don't know why I just do. And so that helps me just remember that my pelvis needs to be a little bit more lined up. But um, another thing I always see a lot of, and I'm sure you do too, is just locking our knees, tightening up the bottom part of our body when we sing. And so I really try to make sure everything stays very elastic and relaxed in the bottom part of our body. So again, the skeleton is doing the supporting. Yeah, I love that. Uh, all right, so let's say we're all stacked up and aligned and ready to go with that kind of easy floating head. What is the next thing you like to do or to talk about? So the next thing I love, I'm in love with these exercises, semi-occluded vocal tract exercises. Oh yeah. Love team, them. Team SOVT right here. <laughs> yes, right here, right here. There's so many, and you know, you have a wonderful video that, that I share often on, on SOVT exercises, which I really appreciate. So, you know, there's a variety of things you can do with straw, straw and water, cup with a hole in the bottom, all of that stuff. But a lot of times I, I simply use voice fricative uh, consonants as I feel like I just carry those around you with me all the time. You don't have to have a cup with a hole in it with you. Exactly. To, to do that. Exactly. It's right so there. For those who don't know what voiced fricatives are, for oh, example. Yes. So we have V, Z, a voiced TH, Z. And I always say if you're feeling French, J can also, <laughs> yes. Good one. I like the, those are the four I go to. Great. Mainly. And my favorite is V. Uh, my favorite is also V. Is it? Twinsies. <laughs> of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> so, okay. uh, and I know that, <laughs> which, if you're at a party, what's your favorite vo voice? What's your favorite voice well, fricative to work your SOBTs on? <laughs> it's usually V, but today I'm feeling <laughs> I'm feeling a little zhuzhy today. <laughs> but I love them. I feel like there's so many benefits to semi-occluded vocal tract exercises beyond just equalizing that pressure um, subglottally and supraglottally, which I really like saying a lot. So, so let's define that. Yes. Yeah, so subglottally below, below basically the vocal folds. Yeah. And supraglottally above. Yeah. Right? And just to get real specific, the glottis Please. is that space between the vocal folds. Yes. For those of you following along at home. So sub yes. and super. Yes. Thank you. I love that. Mm. And of course, uh, the main goal of semi-occluded vocal tract exercises is that when we breathe in to sing, we create this subglottal pressure. And this, by narrowing the vocal tract above the vocal folds, above the glottis, we can actually create a back pressure that equalizes everything, allows your vocal folds to work the way they're supposed to. And I love them because also I have found, you probably found this too, Kathleen, it helps you through your break so um, right nice. isn't it fabulous so nice <laughs> it just feels so effortless yeah and i love to equate sovt work to like water aerobics it just kind of makes everything 
easy. So instead of jumping up and down like high impact aerobics, it's like support for all of your you know muscles and joints. But for I this structure, that. rather than your whole body, you're yes. totally, you can totally steal that. I'm totally stealing that. I'll Thank give you. you credit like once or twice for sure. Right. And then after that, you thought of it. <laughs> it's, it's <all. laughs> but I do love that because that's exactly what it feels like. And I, I'm able to sing lower and higher than I think I can. Yeah. Because again, I think it takes, it takes the muscle and the micromanaging out of it. And it just allows everything to work the way it does. Right. Fewer yeah. variables then up here as well. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, um, and the way, uh, a lot of times, just the way I do those semi-occluded vocal tract exercises is I'll just start singing up and down on five, like a- Can you take us through an exercise? Yes, absolutely. Right, let's I do would that. love to. Let's sing. So ni it was nice and easy, simple. It's just up and down on five. And I just start out only on the voice fricative. So doing a And then I start just taking it down. Let's do a couple. And each time I can just feel the release of that pressure. It's just so, it's so lovely. So lovely. <laughs> and, and then you can kind of go into different vowels. So um, I'll go back to that exercise and I'll do a. And then take the same thing and just keep doing that. But start out with the voice fricative and then go into whatever you're singing. I think makes just a big difference in getting those vocal folds working and happy. So. That's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> happy vocal folds. It's going to be the name of my next. Um, happy quartet. vocal folds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wonder how much laughing I'm going to have to edit out. There will be outtakes of just us laughing. It's just us laughing at each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we've gotten through some SOVT work. Ah. And ah. then what's one of the next things you like to do or think about? So the next thing I like to think about is the space in which I'm singing, because I've got my vocal folds happy and working together in tandem. And so, and this kind of goes hand in hand with breathing as well, actually. So um, for a long time, I was teaching my chorus to take this really big, high lifted breath that was actually causing a lot of tension in the back of the throat because again overachievers and we right. you know like i can do that yes you want me to lift things i will sure. lift things lift yes yeah. so um i found that the more i can keep things kind of where i naturally speak and again this may vary from person to person depending on how they speak and how their voice naturally works right because if i speak uh -huh. like this that might <laughs> not be a great foundation for speak singing Exactly. You kind of sound like, you almost sound like a pirate when you started out. Right. Like, it's, my, it's my ventriloquist, my bad <laughs> ventriloquist work. All right. So assuming we have a fairly natural speech pattern. A fairly happening. natural speaking place. Right. right. And if Got not, it. that's something we have to work on in the, you know, in the apparatus releasing tension. Every time I work with someone on a PVI, they're like, I have never had to work so hard at relaxing in my life because we have taught ourselves not to relax when we're singing like i have to be working hard or otherwise i'm i must not be doing something right so and, and in life right like, yes and all this time carrying tension it takes yes oh it's that just, really exactly hmm. it, it can be especially when you know we want to do well we want to sing well so much that we work really hard at it <laughs> So um, speaking space, I, I love, I, it feels so natural. And um, I think a lot about uh, how often I used to really try to drop my jaw when I was singing mm -hmm. and how that actually kind of closes up that back hinge and actually gives me a little less space back here because right. you can feel that kind of, so keeping that kind of space that comes consistently all the way through, um, one way I used to do it, and of course I have clean hands, my, but um, I used to put like a pinky right in here. Right. I know this is so attractive, <laughs> but 
but the, just that idea of keeping this really consistent space as opposed to rather than like a shark to... that's like ah, baby. yes yes exactly yeah, like right mm -hmm. causes causes tension yeah so you know if you feel <laughs> take your cleanest pinky at some your cleanest point cleanest finger right <laughs> cleanest finger and I, I put it all the way back to my molars and you can hear the difference if i'm going la 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 where i'm really dropping my jaw uh-huh or la 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 certainly more consistency to the sound right yes more consistency uh and actually weird weirdly a better space without creating trying to create that space with the front of your mouth yeah and what i've found yeah. is that singers often fall into one of two camps either they over open or they're or they over like yes so exactly if you're a person who does this that might not be the best do exercise that. <laughs> do not do that yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing right again with mass vocal production it's always it's always we're again we're all built so differently mm -hmm. i don't ever think there's ever going to be one thing that works for absolutely everyone except maybe sovt because it's awesome right. um <laughs> clearly so thinking about i think a lot more about breathing and singing in my speaking space as opposed to over enunciating over achieving with my breath and um as an example if i'm doing somewhere with a rainbow and it goes somewhere over the rainbow you know i used to do a yeah exactly just so much and a lot of it is I felt like I was emoting when I did that. Like I'm emoting with my mouth, right? right. Like here are my emotions. My right vowels here. are so emotional. <laughs> yes, please, they are, aren't they? Please connect right with here. my story. <laughs> and it just felt emotional. But if I do more in the speaking, if I say somewhere over the rainbow, it's all right in here so easy. And then if I can sing there, somewhere. It feels wonderful and it also feels like I'm not working hard enough. Like right. my brain goes, wait, you should be doing more with that. But we had that feeling of release rather than like push through it. Exactly. Yes, it is. It's just so um it it feels and it feels more authentic when I do it that way as well. Like I feel like I can connect more. Nice. Um, yeah. And a lot of that has to do with our tongues too. Um for a long time because of, I, I'm sure you can remember us teaching, like put a golf ball in the back of your throat and, and put an all egg that in your mouth. Yes. Right there. Yes, put, exactly. put an egg in your mouth. <laughs> and making like the it. back of our tongue. Yes, right, right here. <laughs> oh. I can't even sing that way anymore. It just disturbs me. <laughs> well, I mean, that might be, that might be a really great, time to just slip in there that singing uh, across genres even it tends to go through through phases of popularity so there are yes. times and places where that where that sound is more popular and there are times and places where a more a more speech driven pattern if you listen to a record from 1960 of a choir you listen to a record from 1920 from 1980 they're gonna have slightly different timbres yes autos speed up and slow down i know yes. that was controversial but there's definitely like what is what is in vogue and i think i love what's happening right now i do too because it's aimed for a more natural flowing sound that's not so contrived exactly see and i agree with you i am in love with this right now because and i tell my students this often i want you to sound like you i want to hear you and it, to me, that is so empowering that it's like, it's, it's just me, me not trying to sound like anyone else, but me just sounding like me is that's it. And, and it also, I think, adds to the vulnerability and the authenticity of what we bring to the stage, mm -hmm. because we are, we're just sharing. We're me, not we a have. mask I'm putting on. Yes. Which yes. Which can be scary to get into, you know, we, I've talked before a lot about how, how we confront our own sense of self and our own voices. How do we learn to love that about ourselves? Yes. So this isn't just about mechanics. It's a, there's a, there's a pretty big psychological component here about acceptance and flow and all sorts of things like that. Exactly. And I think that's why it's sometimes it's easier 
to go back to the uh, lots of like lots of backspace because it feels safer. It, it's almost like a mask that I can, you know, kind of hide from because I'm not super great at being vulnerable as a performer. That's a difficult thing to do. But um, putting our pure voice out there, it it it's pretty powerful. It really is for performer and for audience. Absolutely. So, That's yeah. awesome. I love it. I love it. Okay, so we've yeah. talked about alignment. We've talked about SOVTs. We talked about kind of a natural speaking space for singing. You touched a little bit on what not to do with your tongue and soft palate. Yes. Do you have any extension of that? Like what should we be doing? With our tongue and soft palate? <laughs> that is a great, so uh, for the most part, I, I talk about kind of leaving our soft palate alone because it, it kind of knows what it's doing. But there are definitely times where we can be pressed down a little bit in the back of our throat or have that little bit of like we, we were talking about if you talk a little bit more clenched or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, again, I love using sounds that we already use. Like a lot of times if you can use the B sound singing, um, ba, 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 that kind of gets you more back into your natural lift without you having to think. I am going to lift my soft palate right now because that's when we usually get into overachieving. So I think finding natural sounds that that automatically create and just that's what I also do for my tongue. I use the vowel E a lot to get my tongue more forward in my face and less back and down. Right. Because we one of the go to's for a number of years, and I think that they're still they're still good to be had in this. But the yes. idea of like sing on a yawn, sometimes that pulls our tongue back and into the oh, way, yes. right? So if you mm -hmm. find that like little bit of space with now sing like a e and that ease yeah. of it, like hey, yes, that'll get best of both worlds, don't you think? I definitely think so. Absolutely. Because I think you're right. With when we were teaching a lot of that backspace lift breath, it was just sucking our tongue right back and down. So yes. And even when you did that E, it, it's so it's, it's a little Pringles potato chip position that I think of a lot because you're the front of your tongue is forward, the sides of your tongue are up. So it just looks like a little, it looks like a little potato chip. <laughs> Overachiever warning. Yes, don't, don't measure your don't tongue push with those Pringles, up. <laughs> How am I doing? Does it Wait work? a minute. I, it's a centimeter maybe, off on the maybe side. That's too, maybe that's too far. <laughs> oh, but it really does. And I found that then my Oz, everything else become a little more natural because my tongue is not pulled down and back. So that's another thing you can try if E works for you is that same pattern, but doing like E like switching in between and seeing what your tongue is doing. That was not a good example. My all went wonky. Well, um, but that's actually a great example because what do we do if our if our all goes wonky? We yes. notice there's too much difference between the E and the aw. So one that I love to transition to is into an A sound. So e I love that. And then maybe to the like maybe and then afterwards, after that yes. feels good, then we can throw the aw in there. Oh, I love that. And even a e -a -a -a. Oh, that was so did much you, easier. Did y'all hear that? Did, did y'all hear how seamless that was? <laughs> That's good stuff right there. I love that. Okay, I'm using that too. Yes, again, those transition sounds that we naturally do so that yeah. we can. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Sweet. <laughs> love these moments. I know, right? <laughs> My favorite. All right, so natural so stuff happening. Yes. Feeling things in a, in a natural way where we can have kind of the right amount of support, but then not over, not overachieving, not over contriving things. Yes. Did you have anything you wanted to add about, about breath? I think we kind of skimmed past that, but might wanted to come, might have wanted to come back to it. Yes, definitely. For sure. In fact, whenever I teach, whenever I give, um, vocal instruction and say, Hey, what do you want to work on? I like 90% of the time people say breathing. I want to work on my breathing. I, I don't have enough breath. I'm not and what I found interestingly enough is that when I do semi occluded vocal tract exercises, when my tongue is in the right place, when I'm not hyper lifting my soft palate, the breath management becomes much, much better. Like I'm using my breath more efficiently. I don't, 
I, you know, it, it, a lot of times losing air doesn't have as much to do with the mechanics of taking an air as we think it does. It's more about what we're doing with that air and how right. we're managing it. Right. Like how efficient it is once it hits the vocal fold. Yes, exactly. I know when I, uh, so my background, I was an instrumentalist. I was a trumpet player and I didn't have to deal with vocal folds. I, I dealt with whatever that was. I'm sure. Lip. Yes, exactly. <laughs> But I know when I started singing, I had a very airy sound, which is fairly common for younger voices anyway. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, like I still had that feeling of escaping, like air escaping. What would you what would you say to someone who was dealing with that? Yes. So that's absolutely vocal fold closure. Right. And honestly, and I know this is going to be my go to all the time, but going back to SOVT, I think that helps with vocal fold closure so much. And so I tell people a lot, I don't use the voice fricatives just at the beginning of my warm ups. I use them all the time. If I'm making a learning track and this part is, is just not sitting in my voice right, I'll sing it on a V for a while until I can feel that um, happen. And weirdly, I don't, now I'm going to say this has no scientific basis whatsoever, but I also noticed- I love that alert. <laughs> Because sometimes we just have to go into feeling and like, here's yes. my experience. There's not a, there's not a picture of this in a text. There, yes. Not that I know of, at least maybe Kath, Kathleen will probably just go, oh, of course it's we can, this. We can look into it. We'll, yes. we'll fact check. <laughs> but I find that if I'm tightening up my core, I actually have less, um, less vocal fold closure and less relaxed sound if I am pulling in on my core and, and like tensing it. I find that when I relax and, and kind of think of my pelvic floor going down and out instead of up and in, I don't know if it's because I feel more relaxation in my larynx when I do that. I don't know if the vagus nerve has anything to do with it whatsoever, but I just wanted to throw that in there because it's, it's a great word. And if you all don't know much about it, you should look into it. I just feel like that just keeps coming back to the whole where there is, when there is tension anywhere in the body, there is tension in the voice. Yes, right? absolutely. Absolutely. So whether, it's, whether or not it's like a specific connection, it's like, oh, I'm tense here and therefore I'm also tense here. Yes, exactly. And weirdly enough, when, when I'm a little more, that's what I call like being grounded. Uh, that's just, for some reason that also helps with my vocal fold closure. And I think part of it is, is just, this is really relaxed and there's nothing interfering with my, my vocal folds saying howdy to each other in a really healthy way. Um. <laughs> I have, I, you know that now I have a cartoon in my head of this <laughs> vocal fold with little face saying, howdy, howdy. Shall we get along together neighbor? <laughs> So many things will come from this session. I can just feel it. Um, yeah, comic strip, like the one that has the brain and the heart, but it's gonna be like the vocal folds and the glot and the yes. soft palate and the tongue oh. all <laughs> Talking hanging out. To each other. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I think again, it's also finding the sounds that like um if it's semi-cluded vocal tracks, if it's singing on a certain vowel, something that creates that vocal fold closure for you and then figuring out how that can translate into other parts of your voice. Like if singing on an E really helps you get connected with your voice, then singing, um, starting on an E and then singing whatever you're singing and seeing if that space is working. Sometimes your tongue's in the way, sometimes you're bringing in too much air. Was it too much air for you, do you think, Kathleen? Because I know that that can really so for me, blow I your full closure. And I will say that the, the number one go-to exercise I had was an SOVT, but it was the NG sound. So when oh, I'm yes. air in the vocal folds, I usually go to that. Mm, 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 and that like feeling of like, all right, we're doing our job mm. now. Yes, I can definitely that. Mm. And it's interesting that also takes the tongue off the, off the back, it's, it's right? Out of the way. It, it takes away variables because the air is coming through the nose. I also like to do those NGs with my mouth hanging open just a teeny bit, like, mm -hmm. it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. which is, mm, yes. More, more <laughs> stuff there. More stuff. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And, it, and again, I, I, I think I am preaching SOVT as the cure to all the world's ills right now because it works <laughs> so well in so many different situations. It's amazing. I love it. Well, <laughs> let's let's kind of tell everybody like if you're having trouble, go try some of these SOVTs. 
and let us know how they're working for you. Yes. Do it yes. in the context of a song, come in and out of that, come in and out of vowels and like, let us know if that's working for you and what your Start favorite ones that. are. Yes, it yes. Be, but it might be, which is not a voice mm-hmm. fricative, but it right. is still another <laughs> semi-occluded exercise. Yes, absolutely. Um, hole in the bottom of the cup. Um, I think Jordan Travis does a video singing through a funnel, which I love. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to need, I'm going to need to uh, get that on video. I'm going to send not. you the link. There Perfect. is a video of that that exists, Perfect. but, um, and then back to the breathing, it just goes back to also, if we are trying to overachieve on our breathing, in other words, I'm, I am breathing to sing. <gasps> so I'm going to take it as much and, and I am breathing with tension here. I'm trying to pull in as much air as I can. And ironically, if you pull in too much air, you're actually going to lose most of it before you even start singing. And it, it's all for naught really. So yeah, a lot of what is over volume in that case, and volume exactly. meaning like amount. Yes. Quality over quantity. Yeah. I do find for a lot of these things, just kind of for the record, that finding your edges um, during during exercises will help you know how far you can go when you're actually singing. Yes. So sometimes, yes, I'll do breathing exercises where I will go further than I would singing because I want to know where those edges are and I want to develop the flexibility and you know make sure these muscles are coordinated and have some, some space and some good use, but then know where that is. Like, okay, that was too tense. I'm not going to go that far when I sing. (laughs) You know, that's a really good point, Kathleen. I love that because a lot of times the breathing exercises are just to get those muscles working the way they should make sure all of that's going on and, and finding those edges, I think is so important. And then realizing, okay, I'm not going to do this when I actually sing, but I'm making sure these muscles are going and Uh, going to work the way they should, because a lot of what we do, uh, as I say often, is make sure everything's working the way it should and then get ourselves out of our own way. So our voice can just kind of shine through in what we're doing. Oh, I love that so much. What a what a great thought to end on. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you spending time with me today. I I always love connecting. I always love to hear what you're working on and what you're teaching and uh, very much appreciate it. You too, my friend. So good to see you. Take care. I will prompt. Prompt me. (laughs) Line. (laughs) Keep rolling.